So our next presentation is a, a, a tag team affair um, with uh, Charles Eckel and Giles Heron uh, presenting uh, Getting Started with Open Daylight. So there's going to be a practical demo aspect as well as... Uh, well, you're just going to be more in the next yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually had two presentations, like one running onto the other, so more in the second one. Okay, okay, so you're going to do this as a one-hour presentation, or are you going to do it as a... No, we'll, we'll be flexible. We'll break okay. it. Yeah. And the next one is doing GBP with, um, no, not GBP, BGP. BGP. Uh, yeah. GBP with, uh, with Open Daylight. So. Yeah, so I, I kind of cover the basics, the easy stuff with Open Daylight, and then uh, Giles will take you in a uh, more in-depth use case with using BGP. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, my name's Charles Eckel. Um, title he here is Open Source Developer Evangelist. So I work at Cisco, but the cool thing about my job is I get to work with a lot of the stuff that um, Cisco does with open source, um, where we're contributing to open source, where we're using it in our products. And uh, Open Daylight is just an example of that. So this is a pretty um, introductory uh, talk into Open Daylight. And uh, feel free to jump in with questions at any time, let me know. And I'll certainly try to leave room for questions at the end. Quick rundown of the agenda, so just a level set, I'll go very quickly and briefly into what SDN is, then uh, what is Open Daylight, then we'll look at um, how easy it is to install and uh, get started with Open Daylight, then run through a few use cases and I'll take the, uh, the easiest use case of the ones I, I show you to, to demonstrate to you. Um, partly because it's also something you can pretty trivially then do on your own, set up on your own laptop. Um, so, which hopefully you'll, you'll want to do and find interesting after this talk. So first of all, what is SDN? So I think when SDN first came out, the whole idea was that's this separation of the, the control plane and the, the data plane. And so, you know, fair enough. Um, based on using OpenFlow, um, that, that was like the protocol that was used. It still is used, but especially initially, that's what everyone was thinking of. And then this uh, logically centralized uh, control plane. Just instead of having all the control spread across all kinds of uh, network elements, you kind of bring it into one place where you, you coalesce all it. And then we think of a white label switches too. It's like we can get rid of a lot of that expensive hardware and, and just run everything using these white label switches. And it's not that that's not a valid case, it, it is, and it certainly is still happening, but um, I think SDN has come to, to mean a lot more and there's a lot more value to SDN than just that. So you can certainly, and I think should think of SDN more broadly. And um, one of the most valuable things there is I think if you look at SDN as really unleashing the, uh, or providing you access to the vast amount of information that's in the network. It's always been there, but it's never really been something that's been exposed to you as a, an application developer. Um, with SDN, that's something that is, is very valuable, and I think that's really where the power of SDN lies. It's in the, uh, the network programmability opportunities that SDN exposes for you. So this is just illustrating that broader definition uh, that I just mentioned of SDN. You see, I mean, of course, there still is the separation of the control plane and the, the data plane or the forwarding plane. But um, what I'm really trying to illustrate here is that there's a lot of information that's down deep into the network, which now you, you know, when you're writing an application, can have access to. So the idea is that you can be seeing what's going on with the network, you can take that into account, your application can do something intelligent based on that, kind of program that into the network through the controller, and you just have this nice uh, uh, cycle where you can start to write some really um, clever, useful, network-aware applications. So if you think of that broader definition of an SDN controller, what is it that we really expect or, or need from an SDN controller? I mean, of course, it, it needs to work and make our, our network, you know, function, but, you know, it, more importantly, I think we really want it to be a platform on which you can write these network-aware applications that I was just talking about. Uh, you want it to be something that provides you with a good uh, development environment for writing those applications. And it's going to be very important to you 
in order to give you that development environment that there's APIs that are available uh, to you and that are well defined. Um, you're going to need to be able to have some abstractions because you're not going to want to worry about what the underlying uh, network topology is. You want it to be able to abstract that away from you. And you also don't want to be worrying about protocol independence. We mentioned that uh, you could use OpenFlow, but there's a lot of other protocols you could be using. And you don't really, at the application level, you don't want to care or know or um, worry about those details. And notice that, you know, in that, uh, maybe I did use the word OpenFlow, <laughs> but, but it's not limited to OpenFlow. This really goes, you know, far beyond that. So now let, let's jump and take a look at Open Daylight. So a bit of an eye chart here, but the idea that I wanted to get across to you is in that, that middle part, don't worry about all the different names that are really in there, but you basically have your basic networking functions, you know, in the red that's kind of in the middle. You have some enhanced networking functions. There's a lot of functionality that's built into um, uh, Open Daylight. And those are the core things that it kind of needs to be a, a you know, a, a, a network, um, a controller. And it does all those jobs very well. But I think more importantly is when we start to think about from an application perspective, how it's going to work. And if you go, well, let me go down first. OpenFlow is the thing that's mentioned on the far left-hand side, but it has plugins for all kinds of other uh, network protocols that you might want to support in your network. So you're not just limited to OpenFlow. Um, there's much more that it can deal with. And then as a application developer, it also exposes, if you look at the top, the APIs. You get uh, uh, RESTful APIs, including uh, RESTConf, and you also get NetConf. So you get these APIs that um, you can build your applications on top of. And then Open Daylight is going to take care of abstracting away the rest, the different topologies, the different protocols that are underneath. So maybe just to back up and give you a little, a brief history of, of uh, Open Daylight. So it was founded back in 2013, um, launched as a project within the Linux Foundation, and basically started when a group of founding companies came together and contributed a bunch of software and uh, more importantly, maybe uh, uh, development resources to, to kick it off and get it going. And um, it grew very quickly. Uh, I say 600 plus contributors. I know there were over 600. It obviously is a number that continues to grow, as does the lines of code. Um, and most of it is uh, written in Java. So when you think of Open Daylight, you can think of it as being a Java project. Uh, the first release came out in February of 2014. It was called Hydrogen. And since then, they've been having releases roughly every eight months where you saw that eye chart I had at the beginning. There's all kinds of projects and functionality and pieces in there, a lot of plugins at the bottom. So a lot of people are contributing to Open Daylight in different areas, uh, but it has a very modular design which allows that. But the idea is, hey, every once in a while we want to pull all this together into a stable release. And so that's something that uh, it's built into the planning that every eight months essentially come out with a new release and, and have pretty much been able to stick with that. Uh, the current um, stable release is called Boron, and uh, the next release, which will be coming out in, in May, is called Carbon. And in case you haven't you know, guessed, the release names are all named after elements in the periodic table. So you also get to, uh, when you play with Open Daylight, to, to learn a bit about that as well. Uh, very briefly, just go over from a software architecture point of view. I already mentioned it's, it's Java. That was just chosen as, as the language that was going to be used for it. Um, uses the Maven build system, which if you work at all with Java, you'd be very familiar with. And then also uses Craft. And, and Craft is important because um, when you install Open Daylight, remember there's that ton tons of functionality in there. Um, almost no one really wants to use every bit of functionality that it has. In fact, you usually use a, a small subset in your network. And if you turned everything on, um, 
uh, I wouldn't want to guarantee for you that it's actually going to work. So when you install Open Daylight, it, it comes up with uh, a very bare number of, of features installed, just the core that it needs to start up. And then you can enable um, individual features, um, the ones that you specifically need for, for your use cases in your network. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail uh, later on. So with that bit of background, now let's go look at the installation. And um, don't worry if you can't read the details here, I'm just giving you the link where you can go and download the code. You're always going to find at this place the um, uh, stable releases, like the, st the latest stable version for each of the um, most recent releases. So you can go there and just grab that, um, download it, and then it's as simple as um, unzipping it and just typing this command, this bin craft. And with that, it's going to load up and no complicated configuration, um, nothing like that that you need to do because as I mentioned at the beginning, it's gonna start with very few features and then once it's up and running, um, you will be able to turn on individual features that you want. So playing around with the features in Carafe, uh, just a, a few handy commands here. You can do feature colon list. That'll show you all the features that are available on the platform. Uh, feature list dash I will tell you which ones are already installed. And then you can go and you can install um, one feature if you want. You can install multiple features. And um, you can also uninstall features, which, which is handy. But the uh, the caveat here, the tricky thing that I want to warn you of is when you do uninstall a feature, from the, the CLI perspective, it'll look like it was uninstalled, but it's actually continue, going to continue to exist and live on within the controller unless you, you stop the controller and then restart it again using this uh, bin carafe in a clean, to say a clean install. So just a word of warning there, because uh, that could trip you up. So what does this look like? Uh, this screenshot that I have here, this is just after I installed Open Daylight initially. And I did a list of the features that are there. And this little X means the feature is installed in the installed list. And you can see there's very, very little there. This is just the core platform. And then there's something in um, Open Daylight that I'll show you shortly called Deluxe. Deluxe is just the, uh, the kind of graphical, the, the user interface, the front end that gets put on. You have the CLI, but, but Deluxe is a, a very uh, useful um, interface that you can use as well. So in the example here, I'm just showing you, well, if I wanted to figure out how to turn on the Deluxe feature and install it, how would I go about doing that? And so I use that feature list command and just grep for Deluxe, and it'll show me all the things that, um, that contain Deluxe. And in this example, what I did was I installed the Deluxe Core, which gives me the minimum set. I could have also done Deluxe All. Uh, I would have just installed a few more things. And then I show you that after running that command, now if I do a feature list, um, again, I can see that I got all the core uh, parts of Deluxe installed. Once I have that, then I can just go to um, navigate to um, open up Deluxe. And in this example, I put localhost because I'm running it locally on my laptop. So that would just be whatever the IP address of your controller is. And on port 8181, you log in, and this is an example of what it looks like. And we'll go into that in a little more detail later too. So now some example use cases. And the first one, which this is one I'll go into in a bit more detail um, with a demo, is to show you how you can load up Open Daylight and then uh, use something called Mininet. Um, how many people have heard of Mininet? Okay, great. <laughs> so you probably um, won't have too much difficulty with this then. The idea is that uh, to use a, a VM that has Mininet inside of it and just use that to create a sample network, which you can then um, have Open Daylight play with. And then just to get it in your head, but I'm not gonna go into details on either of these, but you'll actually hear talks later on today that, that talk a bit more and a bit, you know, about both. Um, another example use case, which is very interesting, you've probably heard about VPP, and this just shows pictorially how you could use Open Daylight and, and with VPP as the underlying um, network underneath it. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe next year we'll show that one. 
and then here's a BGP LS because again, there's there's the uh, the reason I wanted to show these di different ones is um, the MiniNet one is using OpenFlow, and uh, whereas here now you can see that uh, another use case where we're not using OpenFlow, we're using BGP and, and PSEP instead. Okay, so now we're going to go through how to set this up for yourself and um, and what the demo is going to do. So I mentioned using MiniNet within a VM, so I just downloaded a, that and followed these instructions. Um, thanks to Brian uh, Linkletter, he provided fantastic instructions for how to do this. So uh, I put that link there because I didn't want to try to describe it again myself. He did a wonderful job. And uh, so then in one terminal, I'll start up Open Daylight, which I installed just as I showed you by downloading it and, um, and, and, and uh, we covered that in a previous slide. And then in the other one, I'm going to spin up MiniNet and I'm going to log into it and tell it to create a network uh, that creates, that has three switches and uh, a host attached to each switch. And I'm just going to tell it to talk to my controller uh, my Open Daylight controller, and this happens to be the IP address which uh, the FOSDEM network's given me. Um, so uh, you just replace that with whatever your IP address is. And this other uh, IP address, the 192.168 IP address, that's what got assigned by MiniNet to my um, uh, the VM. Oh, and then I'll go into the browser and we'll take a look and, and play around with that a bit. So that's just a screenshot of what MiniNet's going to do when it starts up. I won't spend any more time on these. We'll go ahead and, and give the demo a try. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> then I'll, I'll fall back to, uh, to using this. So. OK. So let's see. So here is my Open Daylight controller. Um, and if I just do that bin carafe command that we mentioned before, you can see it starting up. And while that's starting up, why don't I go ahead and take a look at my, here's where I, I have at the bottom here, um, my MiniNet VM that I installed. And I'll get that, um, get that going as well. Okay, so Open Daylight started. I have my prompt here. I can do like one of the commands that we talked about, feature list dash I, and I can see all the features I have installed. Um, quite a few because I already ran that command that I showed you before that was going to install the minimum feature set that I needed for um, VirtualBox. It's in the slide, so you can find that yourself, but you'll see you know, because of that, I have Deluxe installed, I have um, the L2 switch that I need, I have RustConf, all of those are going to be used um, for the rest of this demo. So those are all installed, and I should now be able to go and uh, log in. Okay, so I'm logged into Open Daylight, and I'm looking at my network, and I have no network. So, um, that's because I haven't done anything with MiniNet yet. So it started, I need to log into it. The credentials are MiniNet, MiniNet, They're pretty easy to remember, and it's also in the slides. And now I'm just going to um, run those commands to start up a little sample network, and I just put it in a script called start MiniNet network. It's, it's just one command though. I just didn't want to have a bunch of typos when I'm here. So, okay, so that started up. Now if I go back to my open daylight and check it out and reload, so now I can see my three switches. Those just came up within MiniNet. Um, but I don't see my host yet, but if I generate some traffic, do a ping all, they're all connected, so they work. And if I do a reload, now I can see them as well. So just a simple example of how this could, uh, this network now gets discovered and attached into my Open Daylight network. Now I can look at my different nodes and I can see, if I make this a little bit bigger maybe, I can see all the connections that I have and just some statistics. Not a whole lot's gone on because I just created this network. But I think what might be more interesting is I wanted to show you because 
the point I wanted to get across was, you know, application development and um, how this is good for network aware applications. And, and this is pretty cool. This shows you all of the uh, models because maybe I didn't mention this before, but Open Daylight it has a, it's really a model driven architecture where you put uh, the functionality that you're putting into it, you define in a Yang model. And then it reads that Yang model in and it's able to generate APIs and uh, based off of that. So these are all the APIs that are available to me within the platform. And there's, there's quite a few. Um, now, maybe all of them won't actually have a, anything on the back end yet. It depends what I've loaded into the network. But just to give you an example, one that I know has something in it, is if I go to the, um, the Open Daylight uh, inventory. And this is just where I can go and look and see what's in my network. So if I look at the operational data, there's basically, you'll see this convention most of the time, there's an operational data store and a configuration data store. The configuration is what was there when I loaded up, uh, when I started up my controller. And I can go and I can do a command. If I click on this, see it's showing me at the bottom what the um, command is, the rest command. So I can do a get of all the nodes that are in my configuration. And you see I get an error here because there was no configuration. Uh, but remember, that's what we saw. When we started it up, there was no configuration, no configured nodes. They, they got discovered at, at runtime. So if instead I look at my operational and go on the nodes and do this same command, fingers crossed, this should actually work. And it looks like it did. And if I go down, you can see what got returned. And Deluxe just gives me a nice way to, to scan through this. This is exactly what we saw in the picture before, right? I have three different nodes, OpenFlow 1, 2, and 3, and I can see information about each of them, uh, the packets and, that they have and whatnot. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because all of this is what's available to you now programmatically through just basic REST calls. And uh, this is a very simple example, but hopefully it, it impresses on you that um, now as an application developer, I have very easy access to this information, which before I may not have been able to, to get. Okay, let me get out of this. And I'm just gonna jump back to my slides. Okay, and now I just wanna leave you with uh, some additional resources. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I work with open source at Cisco, so everything that, that, that I'm working on within Cisco um, can be found in this open source dev center. This is where the projects that we work on, like Open Daylight, OpenStack, um, you can find information about them and what Cisco's doing and, and where we're using it in our products. And there's a whole site there where you can get more information. This I wanted to show, because these are a bunch of applications that we've written. Um, they're all open source, they're all free. They're really just there to kind of um, help plant that seed that, hey, this is a, a great platform for writing applications, Open Daylight is. And it's, it's quite straightforward to do it. Um, not only are these useful, but they serve really as, as great um, kind of training tools, I would say. So you can download those, all available. This other thing which is quite handy is, for Mininet it was quite straightforward for me to uh, get a VM and just spin it up on my own laptop. But you can imagine that maybe you want to do something more complicated where you have like some, um, some real network equipment behind it. And so we have these uh, sandboxes which you can also use for free, log into them and uh, you know, experiment with some more complicated network examples. And Giles will show you a, a kind of an example of that uh, later on. And then this is just a place you can go for help in case you're having problems with uh, or have questions or want to share something. Um, and that's basically it. So hopefully I left a few minutes for questions. And if anyone has any questions, um, yeah. Uh, I don't, do, do you know? I don't think that much. <laughs> yeah, the question was how much of Open Daylight's implemented in Cisco ACI? And I think they're, 
as far as I know, they're they're totally quite different. separate. Yeah, totally different. And they're probably, I mean, they're probably different market spaces anyways, because ACI is quite targeted around one particular platform, and Nexus, which is whereas ODL, I guess the way I was characterize it, it's what Charles was saying, I guess, about all the about that. You know, when you kind of compare it to ACI, you compare it to Contra, Contra guys are here, or you compare it to ARMS, the problem is it's kind of hard to compare. So you're comparing a Swiss Army knife to an individual tool. Yeah. ODL does just about anything you want in that working space. And the downside of that is, you know, my Swiss Army knife is not the best saw that I own. I have better saws out there. There's always, there's always that tension between having a very general platform and having like a more specific tool. Um, and I guess the demos I'm going to show later, Really, to me, where the value is in open daylight is always once you start using more than one sound plug plugin. So you tend to use one plugin to learn something about the network and then one plugin to do something to the network. So uh, and both the demos are going to show in that kind of space. Yeah. Because open daylight is ready for cell phone and feed traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it, uh, is, is open daylight ready for telco and FE uh, traffic? And, and I would say yes. I mean, there's um, some big uh, providers using it. I mean, AT&T is, is using it. It's part of their, um, their e-comp platform. Um, Tencent has been very kind of open in sharing how they're using. Um, and if you, you've never looked into Tencent and their network, it's, it's just amazing the scale that they're working with. You can see why they'd want to have something like Open Daylight, um, but, but they've, they've really brought back a lot of learnings too and maybe driven some of the, uh, the performance or stability stuff back into Open Daylight. So can I just add on to that? So, so the XN at the ISG ran a plug test over the last two weeks and we took uh, an open FB platform running open daylight, uh, running open daylight SFC running to that and it passed all the tests and you know, very well. So it is fully fully capable in the NFB environment. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Just, yep, yep. Any other questions? Okay, well thank you very much.